so good. That's an excerpt from a new teleseries called House Special. Vancouver chef and author Jackie Kai Ellis explores small town Asian restaurants and the families that own them. And welcome back to our Vancouver. So Jackie, you said in that promo clip there that Chinese Canadian food is the ultimate comfort food. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with you. Uh, but takeout was a bit of a different story for you growing up than, than what we saw kind of there. Yeah, absolutely. At home, you know, there were lots of uh, very light, elegant, light flavored dishes, dumplings uh, that were boiled, not fried. Mm. Not a lot of fried food at home, but that's because my family has uh, roots in northern China. Mm. And when you go out to a Chinese restaurant, especially back in the 70s and 80s, it was all about the fried food, the sweet and sour pork and the, you know, almond chicken and all of that. So yeah, it's yeah. a little bit different, but still it, it's comfort food for me now. Totally. And then you get that reputation of having, you know, greasy Chinese food, right? It's yeah. very different though. Than many of us have at home. Absolutely. Yeah. And so how did this whole series come about? How, how did you get engaged in that project? So it was around the time that there were lots of uh, Asian hate crimes uh, mounting in the city and around the world. And I started feeling like I was confronted with my own heritage and for the first time actually being afraid for my parents' safety. Mm -hmm. And I thought, why is it that I don't know about my Chinese Canadian heritage? That's such a shame. And the only thing I actually remembered was, you know, in high school, maybe like a five minute talk about Chinese Canadians. And so when Black Rhino approached me about being the host of the show, I thought this is the perfect opportunity for me to learn alongside the viewer uh, a history that is so rich and so long and uh, something that I knew nothing about before I started. Yeah, for sure. I think that was certainly a reckoning for so many of us, right? It, that was around like the COVID time, yes, right? Two, yeah. three years ago. Um, and well, you know, really great that you brought us along on the journey with you. So where did you go? Who did you meet? We went to um, Penticton, Kelowna, Red Deer, Grand Prairie, all, like specific cities uh, all around BC and Alberta. And we met up with some small town restaurant owners. And isn't it true that every single small town in Canada has a Chinese restaurant? Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. where we went. We went to the smallest places and sought out that restaurant owner. And we wanted to get their stories. What is their experience like? And also the history of immigration in that area um, along, the railways, uh, along the railway system as well. And so as you were going through this series, you know, what stood out to you? I think what stood out to me is that you know how Chinese people don't say, I love you, but they cook a meal for you. Yes. And they don't say, hi, how are you? They say, hi, have you eaten yeah. yet? It's like, right? yeah, have exactly. you had dinner yet, right? That's Always, it. that's the greeting. <laughs> yes, and as a, as a person of that sort of straddled uh, Canadian uh, culture as well as Chinese culture, I always wondered why is this love so much about practicality? And what I learned is that this is actually generations and centuries long through famine, through so much sacrifice, uh, people coming here to work the railway system, leaving their families, knowing that they would never see them again. Of course, when they're expressing love, they're going to say, have you eaten yet? Because they've sacrificed their lives to be able just to feed their families. And that was their way of showing love. And so this has passed down generation after generation. And so when my mom cuts me a bowl of fruit to say, I love you, I really take that um, on a very different level now because I understand where this comes from. Absolutely, um, it's so interesting. Um, so what specifically though did you find through this journey was Canadian Chinese food? What did that look like? Yeah, and this whole topic of authentic Chinese food seems to always come up. Mm -hmm. You know, it bubbles up here and there. You know, when you're eating sweet and sour pork, is that real Chinese food? Is that not? And what I think is that this is, yeah, it's Chinese food, but it is a genre of its own. It's Chinese Canadian food. It is immigrants who have come here, uh, brought flavors of home to, to a certain degree or techniques from home, found ingredients that they could find in a new home and made food for people that they knew would sell. That was the thing, the practicality of being able to put 
food on their own families' tables too. Mm -hmm. And so the genre of food that was very appealing to the local uh, people at that time became Chinese Canadian food. Yeah, for sure. And sometimes it's just a product of just the ingredients that they even had access Absolutely, to, right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, so um, I have a feeling you had tried a lot of ginger beef along the way. I did, yeah. Okay, who, who had the best ginger beef? BC, okay. Alberta, is it a duel? <laughs> uh, there is no competition, hands down, hands down. It was Silver Inn in Calgary, which is the original ginger beef. Okay. Sadly, they have since closed. Uh, but it was one of the most revelatory dishes I've had, and I did not expect to love it as okay, much. Okay, tell as me it. why. I need to know. Okay, so normally, this is what I went in thinking ginger beef would be. I haven't, to be honest, I haven't actually eaten ginger beef. Okay. I feel like I haven't really had it, so. It is, uh, let me just describe the dish. It is typically uh, kind of like shred, sh like long uh, sticks of beef, okay. deep fried, and then put in sort of like a sweet and sour sauce. It's kind of like sweet and sour pork. But when I had it at the original place in Calgary, it was crispy fried to a point where it was never soggy. It was mm. always crispy, even when you put it into the sauce. And the sauce was not cloying. Mm. It was very um, vinegary, but light and elegant. And it was uh, like almost like a watery sauce. Oh. And then you coated the beef in it, and it was like you were just tasting crispy fried beef with... Um, this sort of like impregnation of uh, vinegar and mm. uh, and spices. It was so good. Oh, anyway. that sounds so delicious. Yeah, because yeah, my it. impression only sounds like it's like starchy, but it doesn't sound like that no, starchy at all. not at all. I have cool. no idea how he made it so crispy too. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Okay, all right. And you've also brought um, a, a yes. tray of delights for us. So yes. what do we have on the table here? So this is a tray of togetherness and, you know, soon coming will be Chinese New Year. This is very mm. traditional for Chinese New Year to have uh, eight different compartments of delights that you would put out for Chinese New Year. And each of these things usually has a meaning to them. So for example, peanuts and candied ginger would have the meaning of like health and prosperity. And pineapple here mm. uh, has the meaning of success in business. See, always practical. Right. And of course, <laughs> no explanation needed for this, yes, right? Yes, always about the money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and even the number eight, right? Yes. Yeah, it means prosperity. Cool. All yeah. right, okay. I feel like I need to try a piece of this. Yeah, try and mm, of delicious. course, you remember these. The candies. white rabbit. Yeah. So nostalgic, these yeah. candies. They're kind of like milky, delicious. Yes. All exactly. right, well, so lovely to have you here, Jackie. Tell us, where do we watch this series? So you watch this Telus Optic Channel 8 uh, video on demand, and then also on www, uh, I guess I don't need to say that part, housespecialseries.com. <laughs> there you go. Okay, very good. Thank you so much for being here today. Jackie Kai Ellis, always a pleasure. Thank you.